Hey everyone and welcome. I'm your host, Jill Tyrone, and today I'm chatting with Melissa Clausen of Acro Dance Teachers Association, and she and I discuss how you can successfully implement acro dance in your studio. A little bit of background on Melissa. She's an acrobatic dance specialist and mentor and the creator of Acro Dance Teachers Association. For the past 25 years, Melissa has built her career as an expert in acro dance studio systems, safe spotting practices, injury prevention, adjudication, and positive mentorship. Melissa takes her role in helping teachers mold and develop children very seriously, and it's the backbone to all of her work. Melissa has extensive experience helping studio owners and instructors put in place acro systems at their studio that get results. Melissa has helped over 200 dance studio owners create wildly successful acro programs and has trained nearly a thousand dance teachers how to become amazing acro teachers. Several of Melissa's own students have gone on to fulfill exciting professional careers, but what she is most proud of is the impact she has been able to make on her own students' lives as caring and contributing givers to society. Melissa is proud of her community's accomplishments and of the positive impacts they are making in the world. So if you're thinking of starting an acro dance program at your studio, but aren't sure where to begin, listen to today's interview with Melissa. Plus, she's got a bonus ebook she's given away to our listeners, so you don't want to miss that. So let's dive right in with my interview with Melissa Clausen. This is Dance Studio 411, where we answer your real life questions about your toughest studio life predicaments, parent problems, teacher turnover, student challenges, policy dilemmas, and so much more. Let's talk about what's keeping you awake at night and what you can do about it. Here are your hosts, Suzanne Blake Garrity and Jill Tyrone. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. I'm so happy you're here today. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I am really excited too to record this with you today. And I am, we've known each other for what, about two, three years now, I think yeah. we met back yeah. on the on the summer show circuit. So yeah. I'm really happy that I actually get to have a chance to sit down and talk to you today about all the great things that you've been doing, the Acro Dance Teachers Association, just all of your knowledge and wealth that you're willing to share with our listeners and our members today. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to chat with you. I, we've known each other and, and I, I just love spending time with you, Jill. So this is an honor. Thank you so much. So why don't you tell all of us a little bit more about you and how you got started with what you're doing and then how that rolled into the Acro Dance Teachers Association? Yeah, well, long time ago. I've been teaching for a very long time, but um, I'm Canadian. And so I used to be working for this big performing arts group called the Young Canadians. And they're a performing arts group out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And they put on this $4 million show every year called the Grandstand Show. And it's part of the Calgary Stampede, which is one of the biggest stampedes in the world. And they had these performing artists that do this big, huge show. And there's all these different departments. So there was, uh, well, there was a, a acro department. We have jazz, ballet, tap, hip hop, vocal, acting. These kids had this amazing education. And I was in charge of the back then gymnastics department. And so my boss was, his name is Brian Foley. He's like the godfather of dance in Canada. He created the adapt jazz and tap syllabus that most studios in Canada use. And they're international now. But at that time, he was my boss. He lived in Toronto, um, but was our boss in Calgary. And so he'd come back and forth and he was really, cutting edge and he would you know toronto's bigger to, closer to the bigger centers and really 10 years ahead of western canada so he'd bring in all the new stuff and this was about oh 15 years ago and he said we need to start this thing called acro and so i was teaching gymnastics for them and we're like what's acro and so he's trying to explain to us what it is and he's like melissa i want you to teach Acro. We're going to, you know, like we're this cutting edge group that's always doing the latest thing. And so it was my job to learn acro. So I'm trying to teach it. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just teaching gymnastics. I'm like, I don't know, what's acro? Like dance into a trick? I didn't know. So I was floundering. Mm -hmm. I had been to some courses. It just, I wasn't getting it. And so he, what he did was he his acro teacher at his studio, which is still probably top five studios in, in all of Canada, in Toronto, he hired her as a personal mentor and she took me under her wing. Mm -hmm. 
mm. and taught me everything I needed to know one-on-one. -on -one. And we worked, so I'd fly to her, she'd fly to me, you know, she took me under her wing and really showed me what true acro dance was. And I, it took me three years to cross over into mm -hmm. acro dance. And once I started teaching it, <clears throat> Everybody started catching on because the young Canadians were this big group and they do this $4 million show every year, outdoor show with fire, like choreographing dance steps to fireworks. Like it's cool. It was a very cool experience to be a part of that. But local studio owners were seeing this acro. I was the only mm -hmm. one who taught acro in Western Canada. Like there was nobody doing this. And I so then I was picking up jobs. This is pre-children. I was working at a few different studios. Then I started my family. It wasn't <laughs> sustainable. And I said, sure. well, why don't I just teach you guys? I should just teach you guys how to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's when the syllabus was born, when it was like very at the beginning. So I just started putting on these workshops and teaching teachers uh, what I was doing. And with the young Canadians, you know, I would have, Mr. Foley would have this big show and he'd be like, I need you to teach X, Y, Z trick. Like you got half an hour, make it happen. And I would have to find clever ways to mm -hmm. figure out how to do tricks safely and learn them quickly because we, we were under pressure for this huge show and we'd have turnover every year because they auditioned to get in every year. So I would only have half of my students from the year before. I always had new kids. So I had to get good at creating systems to get results that were safe on the, yeah. side, on the big stage and fast. And so I started teaching my methods to local teachers and that grew and grew and grew. And then we went international and then it just got bigger and bigger. That was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now the Acrodance Teachers Association is what it is. And that's how it all started. So it was an evolution. I love that. What an amazing story. And how, what a great opportunity for you to study yes. with those, those masters, true masters oh, yeah. of what they do. Yes, yeah. I was very fortunate. Yeah, very Mr. Fortunate. Foley did a lot for me and I got to work under some of the industry's best. So it was Fantastic. an amazing opportunity. Yeah. Good. And you're so organized. And I love the fact that you mentioned about, you know, creating the systems because that's really what we need to be doing is creating the system. So we're not doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And we're really using our time wisely. Mm -hmm. So Melissa, why, why don't you now explain the difference between gymnastics and acro? You, you touched on it in your intro, but let's really dive in. Give me a good explanation of what the difference is. Yeah, well, I feel very qualified to answer this question because I started off as a competitive gymnast and I crossed over into true acro dance. And so in the gymnastics industry, really in short, this is what I tell everybody. Gymnastics is a sport and acro is an art form. So in gymnastics, it's all about those hard hitting tumbling lines and they have to stick it on the floor or on the beam. And it's about that precision. Um, and in, and they also train on a hard a spring floor. So they have a rebound action from the spring floor on the studio floor. It's about lengthening through the trick as opposed to hard hitting and sticking it. So you're looking for the long lyrical line, the balances, the artistry of the movement. They're also learning on the hard floor. You, you cannot have uh, mats on stage and just you know you have to learn on the hard floor and it's different and so the body trains differently you don't have that rebound action that you do on a spring floor I'll give you an example when I was a student and I learned how to do an aerial on a spring floor there was no way when I got into the studio I couldn't do it on this on the hard floor mm -hmm. because I my body was used to having a bit of a give and a rebound mm -hmm. from the spring floor and so it's really hard to take those tricks and transfer them onto the hard floor so Acro dancers have to learn things differently to be able to do it on the hard floor. And actually, they find it easier. If they learn it on the hard floor and, and ever get into a gym, it's way easier for them to do it because they learned it on the hard floor. So it's really about the gymnastics is the sport uh, and they're, they're really like having to have that precision of sticking it. And it's more tumbly looking. And acro is more lyrical and you're looking at like lengthening through the trick. Great. And I love the fact that you mentioned, especially how you can translate that into if they do go on to a sprung floor, how much easier it is. It's, it's nice to learn almost like the hard way, I guess yep. you'd say, and yeah. then be able to then um, excel maybe if they do want to take it further in, in their gymnastics or if they're doing yeah. something where they have that opportunity. That's great. Yeah. Thanks for that explanation. So I know we're going to touch a little bit on safety, which you mentioned yeah about yeah. but i think first let's talk about for our studio owner listeners who are either thinking about a program or they already have a program maybe and they're looking to expand it or make it more profitable how do you know if acro is right for your studio 
Yeah. Well, I always suggest starting off with a 12 week session. Start with a session, see how you like it, see how your customers like it. Um, we find they, they are gonna love it. Okay, I'm just gonna break it to you. They're gonna love it. But you need to start off slowly, even for yourself. Most of our clients, like 80%, did not grow up doing ACRA as students, okay? Sure. So everybody feels um, unqualified or intimidated to try ACRA at the studio. It's really, you just need the right help and you need to start off slowly. And so I recommend starting with a 12 week session just to dip your toes in the water and see how it's gonna land at your studio. That's the best way. And then if it does land, if people are interested and you feel comfortable with taking it further, then start to move into a full year program. I love that. Good advice. Very nice. I love taking it slow, starting with that smaller yeah. session and then working up to it. And then yeah. two, you mentioned about finding help. We all know that we need good qualified help. Melissa, yeah. how can they find somebody that is qualified to teach ACRO and do this 12 week session or bring it full year to their, to their studio? Yeah, I suggest you create your own teachers. It's so much easier to train your own teachers than to try to find somebody um, that, you know, maybe they're an experienced ACRA teacher, they're gonna do it their own way. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so much harder for you in the studio when you, if you don't know what's going on in your ACRA program because um, you didn't create it or you didn't do it as a student, you're really not gonna have your finger on the pulse of what's happening. You know what's happening in your jazz program, you know what's happening in your ballet program, and you need to know what's happening in your ACRA program. And so to start off, and have a proper foundation, you really need to train one of your own. So what I would suggest is you take one of your teachers or maybe an ex-student, or even we've had members of our association hire moms that are keen. Maybe they have like a background in fitness or working with children or phys ed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Pick somebody who is keen, wants to learn and is good with kids. And then you train them and build it slowly. A lot of people think that they have to, you know, have all these big tricks to have a successful ACRA program. It's not about that at all. That's like an end result, which is secondary. And, you know, don't compare yourself with your competitor that has an existing ACRA program because adding ACRA to the studio is about bringing in an additional revenue stream, but also creating stronger dancers. So when you have a great ACRA program, the stretch and strength that you, ACRA dancers learn transfers over into the other genres, regardless of how many cool high level tricks they can do. That is secondary. So I would suggest hiring one of your own and start small, create this small little program. Mm -hmm. You start with your 12 week session and then you build from there, follow a syllabus and just follow a program and let it evolve slow let it let it evolve slowly mm -hmm. because that when you have teachers that um you know are invested in building it with you that's going to be the best kind of teacher that you can have and once that teacher starts to really get a handle on it you need to bring in an assistant you always need to be bringing up an assistant because you don't want to be stuck i've seen this so many times this mm -hmm. has happened to me, when I have built a program for a studio, I built eight different programs for studios um, that like I built it for them and then we passed it off. And the biggest thing is having new people coming up through the ranks that know what to do because you don't wanna be in a situation where only one person knows how to do it and now they get sick and you don't have a sub or they have to, or they have to leave. You know, and then you have, you've got this program with kids that are progressing and nobody else at the studio knows how to teach it. So you want to start with one of your own, have them trained, build it slowly and bring in assistance as soon as possible by year two at the latest. Very good advice. I yep. love that. And then too, what's happening is if you're training them and they're learning and you have the assistant too, that that's where that um, safety and the yes. actual program where you're you're making sure that you're training them in such a way that the dancers are safe. So uh -huh. let's touch a little bit on that, which I know you did mention. Uh -huh. um, how do you ensure that these dancers are going to be safe doing a, a new program like Acro if they're not already uh -huh. have some sort of a gymnastics background? Uh -huh. Background. You know, actually, it's way easier to work with absolute beginners than gymnasts. It's really hard working with gymnasts. Ah, interesting. Um, because they think they know what they're doing <laughs> and they know what they're doing on the spring floor and in the gymnastics club but 
also the acro technique is different than gymnastics technique and so they're actually difficult to work with good uh, if that's a, that's a i would have thought it would translate just the opposite so that's really not good really. to know thanks for setting me straight on that well not unless you have um a gymnast who's really open and willing to mm -hmm. start over on some things but as far as safety goes you want to make sure that everybody's building up slowly you want to have proper mats you want to have a teacher who is not being pressured to jump ahead to the big tricks before she's ready mm -hmm. and before the kids are ready and you need to have a good strength and conditioning program if 50 percent of what we do in acro is strength and flexibility because you have to be strong and flexible to be an acrobat and if you don't have that foundation of strength and flex mm -hmm. that's where the injuries happen if you have a good foundation like my kids i say give me two years mm -hmm. it's two years of if it's going to feel like all you do is strength and flexibility because we are that's 50% of what I do with my beginners is strength and flexibility because I need them strong and flexible to be able to safely do the tricks. Sure. And so that is the secret to safety is a good conditioning program, strength and flexibility, and then just being smart. Mm -hmm. You know, my students never get injured, never, because I don't ever let them push ahead to things that they're not ready to do. And I make sure they're strong and flexible before we even entertain the notion. So we sometimes teachers will and studio owners will get pressured from parents. Yeah. Um, my kid wants, you know, I have kids come to me. I want to learn an aerial and a back handspring. And like they can't do a handstand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's right. Yeah, those are good goals to have. Now let's figure out how to get there, right? <laughs> let's reverse engineer how to get there. Yeah. And so it's about having the proper equipment. It's mm -hmm. about having a teacher that is not going to push ahead. And it's about having the strength and flexibility in place and then those kids do not get injured my our dancers at our studio the ones that do acro they don't get injuries across the board because mm -hmm. their bodies the facility can handle um bigger bodies when they grow like puberty sure. and advanced acro and jazz mm -hmm. so they are have very strong bodies that don't get injured because that is the number one reason why kids get injured is they're not strong enough to do a step or a trick. I like that. So this would even transcend across all genres and ensure their safety no matter what they're working on. Yeah. You know, when you start mm -hmm. to see your 15, 16 year olds start to get knee injuries, uh, like mm -hmm. hip injuries, yeah. the kids that are doing the acro don't get those injuries because, because we work so much on hub stability. Mm -hmm. hips bum core that when you have a strong center all movement comes from your center and when that's strong like that eliminates 90 percent of injury very that's good that's why a good acro program is so good for the whole studio i love that that's such that's such a good selling point for both yeah. the program to your parents to your students awesome so as far as selling too how do you make an acro program profitable at your studio if you're adding more time into training teachers into the program into the syllabus um, how can we ensure that it's actually going to be a profitable step yes great question mm -hmm. okay so as a business owner you need to know your numbers right it's just like anything you need to have a business plan you need to know what you're doing before you do it don't just jump into something without crunch crunching the numbers i've seen this happen so many times where you know somebody's uh, studio owners keen they're like yes i want to try acro and they just throw together this mishmash class and they either uh don't charge anything because it's part of the um you know flat rate at the studio or they charge the same price as their other classes and it's not profitable because you cap your numbers in acro and i'll talk more about that but you need to crunch the numbers first and foremost to see how much it's going to cost you to get started are you going to get certification for your teacher are you do you need to buy mats do you need mm -hmm. equipment and then how much are you going to charge because i don't recommend having more than 10 students to a teacher and now that's different from our other classes right you're not mm -hmm. you can put a lot more students in your other genres but you can't in acro because there's so much spotting and hands-on work that you'll lose quality and safety if you stack those classes so you want to have a one to ten ratio up to 15 with an assistant, but how much is all of that gonna cost you? Crunch your numbers so that you know if it's gonna be profitable. And mostly you're going to need to charge extra for your acro classes, because it's a specialty genre. Unless you're in a position at your studio where it's mandatory, which is the goal, you wanna get to that point. But if it isn't and it's an optional, optional genre, it's a specialty mm -hmm. genre, you need to be charging more for that. 
you have to be making a profit from acro. And so if you, if you, let's just say like a $15 class, which that is probably, I mean, that's going to be average, but let's just assume it's a $15 class and you've got 10 kids in a class. I mean, you're really make that's, I think, let's see, I crunched the numbers here. <clears throat> in that kind of a class, you're going to make, that's $7,200 a year mm -hmm. from one class. Mm -hmm. When our clients, when they get going with their acro by six months in, they're adding a second class. Okay. So now you're at 14,400. It, this happens nine times out of 10, your program's going to double in the second year. If you have a proper foundation and you built it right. And now you got four classes going, that's $28,800 from adding acro. Like it's just, it really can be, it can be so good for the studio as an additional revenue stream, but don't jump into it without mm -hmm. knowing what your numbers are because you don't want to be undercharging um, or charging, you know, having it as a free class as part of your, you know, like um, unlimited, the, rate. the unlimited, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Make sure you know your numbers first. Definitely. And we definitely talk about that to our members as well. Um, you know, the, knowing your key data and it's mm -hmm. really important if you're not a spreadsheet person and if you're not a numbers person, then get somebody involved in your business yeah. that can show you how to do all this and take into, yeah. take into account the cost of training the teachers, the mats, everything that you would need. But gosh, it sounds like it's a really promising thing. So not only would it be a great benefit to the students for, from a, a strength and flexibility standpoint, but a good revenue stream as well. Absolutely, and kids love Acro. Mm -hmm. They love it. If you've got, if you set it up properly, you've got the right system in place, you, you, you spend like a year working on your foundation, you're going to have those classes, you'll have a lineup out the door. Like this always happens with our members. So just make sure you set it up properly and it's gonna be so beneficial for the studio. I love that. And Melissa, so let's go into a little bit about, you have a freebie for our listeners. So we're yeah. going, we're going to be linking that. So you'll be able to find it, but tell us a little bit about what that is so yeah. that they can go get it. And then, um, just go right into about your program as well, because I know you're starting to get ready at the time of this recording to get ready to open the doors for your registration as well. So I'll let you talk yeah, about absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've got a great little ebook for you. If you're just starting out, it's how it's called how to start an acro program at your studio. It's a little ebook that talks about some of the points we talked about here and in more detail and some other points of what you need to know if you're wanting to get started with acro okay just sort of a first point of reference and that is a free ebook that um, we'd like to give your members and yes we we open up registration twice per year every july and every november and so we are open up registration on november 15th until the 21st. So we only have registration open for a year because mm -hmm. then we close our doors and we start teaching our new class. And so if you have a teacher that you wanna to send to us, then send them to us and we will train them up right. It's a one-year coaching program. Sounds great. And if, if our listeners are happening to grab this recording and it's not during that time, the link that we have here will get you right where you need to be with Melissa, that you open a wait list when your yes. program is not open for registration. So don't feel like you've missed the boat because you can get somebody enrolled for that next session because we never know when people are going to come in and actually listen yeah. to the yeah, recording. But right. yeah, yeah, no, but it's really good because at the time of this recording, we're so excited because you are going to be opening the doors. So that's right. That's right. And yes, you can, you can get on that wait list at any time. And then that way you you know that you're going to be able to get all the information. We have your email and we can send you info when we open up next. Okay, Melissa. So this has been really helpful. I love the information. What else, uh, as we round this out, do you want to add? I just like to say that if you're thinking about adding acro to your studio, you can do it. We've had so many members that have never taken acro before create successful acro programs. You just need to start off small and you will get there. So you can do it. Good advice. Thanks again, Melissa, for being here. And I'm so appreciative of your time and talent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Jill. Thanks for listening to this episode of Dance Studio 411. Visit us online at dancestudio411.com for more great resources and to submit a question for a future episode. Our number one goal is to help you build a successful dance studio business and keep your passion for dance alive.